big day for Australians in a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, ways you could say they're going to be starting on the CT side with OG on the T side. So let's just see what happens. OG have looked like a great team. Everyone's surprised. It's been a really wonderful trip for them so far. Let's see if they can take down Astralis. They're rushing the B bomb side already. And Flames with the opening to drop. Fala gets a nice start. Sip getting overwhelmed as well. But the Dooley's back here on Blame F doing some work. He hasn't bothered to reload yet. He doesn't need to. Three quick headshots. And that should win the round. Next back here. Probably horrified at what's happening on that scoreboard. Blame F looking for the quad. It's going to be stolen by Blame. But they're ready. All right. Yeah. Yeah, they are ready. Whatever it takes. Look, maybe maybe Blame F is the Dooley's Messiah we've needed all along. I don't think I've ever seen this out of him with the uh, with the double pistol. This is a beautiful sequence. Extremely accurate turning around as well. And he's getting wrapped upon. One to nothing. Blame F saving the day. That's what you like to see. Especially considering he's been the rock. He's been the one consistent uh, factor of this team since this kind of roster came together since its inception. So, I mean, you obviously want to see him starting out the day very well. What is What are these shenanigans here? I don't like them. A little, little circus act going on. Maybe they can jump on the bridge. Now, that would be something. That'd be cool. Find, like, an entirely a hidden path that no one's ever discovered before. Yeah. No, I think they're just faffing about, aren't they? Yeah, that's, that's one way to put it. I think they're just uh, wasting some time over here in T-Spawn. They're wasting my time, Jason. They're wasting our time, and that is the true travesty. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a real disgrace. Anyway, probably just, you know, taking a moment. Also, just, yeah, Astralis happy about that pistol win. Give them a little bit of room to cool down. Not that I think it's going to yeah. be, you know, but... You Ice know, the kicker. Yeah, just take it easy a little bit. What a day for Astralis. It could be, or it could be the, the exact opposite. Um... It's a little bit too soon to tell, I suppose. But you're right. Blamef has kind of been the the rock of the team, which is weird given the the legacy of people like Sip and uh, and Glaive, and even to some extent Config. Even though you know inconsistency has been someone that's been trailing his career in some sense, but still. And he always felt like kind of like the the prince of Danish Counter Strike, right? That was like uh, that was always position that we always knew that was fated to join this Astralis roster at one point, and now that we have it. We ain't liking what we see. So it's kind of a weird, weird scenario to be in. He's certainly got to have a, a step up today. All of them do. If they want to qualify for the major, obviously. If they want to qualify for the fall finals. Now, see, when you you said Prince, you mean royalty. But I, for a minute, thought about the low-cut, like, open, I don't know, blazers. Okay, you know? you're thinking the, the artist Chester. formerly known as Prince type thing. Yeah, great, too. It's great. What an honor, but still, um, you know. The player formerly known as That's where my conflict. brain went. Yeah, of course I had a did. whole... Config Purple Rain mix Just, in my brain. Yeah, low cut shirt on Config. That's what you had in your head. Wonderful. Who doesn't? Well, Flames had a wonderful day yesterday. He's going to start out here in the first gun round with a kill around the smoke. That is the aforementioned Config. Speaking of artists, he really is working the middle in an extreme way from both sides. He's going to do the same thing on the CT side when they get there. But what a luxury to have someone that can open up so many rounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can't believe he didn't press all the way. He was halfway through that smoke and called it off, although I guess that's the smarter decision. You get yourself in a four on two and deleted. Goodbye. All right, blame that. What a shot. Yeah. One versus four. If he's in the right position, maybe the HE will get him a one versus three on flames. If, if that's possible, you need a little bit of luck to try and win rounds like these. That would be at least a start, but now he's kind of moved pretty far away from it. Smoke's going up, and he might even hear that and just say, all right, that's it. Like, there's no point. Yep. Fair enough. Out of position. You're right. Maybe spam through the smoke. Maybe get a nade on the planter Molotov to slow things down. Could have had some luck, but things would have had to have gone perfectly. Going to save the M4. Next round should be another buy from the Astralis team. And OG's going to be on the board early. For those of you who missed it yesterday, when OG were playing on Inferno, Flames had on their T side maybe three, four, maybe even five rounds or something where he opened up with double kills to enter the B bomb side where it was so crazy. And then switching over to the CT side, he was just, he was good for a double kill every time yeah. they attacked either bomb site. He was there. He was the saving grace. Without Flames, they, they likely don't beat FaZe yesterday. That's another element to this. Who picked Astralis? How do you, uh, how do you work out an Astralis pick after you just watch OG beat FaZe? If, yeah, that, I mean, that's a good question. We'll have to ask some of those people. I feel, I felt pretty decent about this this OG pick, but I, it's not unfair to say either that we have seen 
out of Australia some some interesting you know games every once in a while. I mean, obviously the fact that they haven't qualified for the major is a big problem. But in Cologne, they actually they looked like a tough team. They made it further than I was expecting. Um, so they're not can't just write them off either. It's a it's a weird. Yeah, but as the, as the body of work as a whole, that Cologne run felt like an over overachievement. Yeah, it did. I agree. So maybe you're nostalgic for that. You're thinking this is it. Like they they could do it. By the way, speaking of Ancient and Flames and how well he's been playing and, and blame him with a little bit of a start here, Config's one of those players on Ancient that usually does super well. So maybe that is something that could bring Astral as an actual win on the map here. They need him to be at a, in, in, at a high level because once he reaches that, there are not many players in the world that can stop him, really, which is, it's so much fun to watch. Probably one of my favorite players to, to sort of, you know, cover in any match. Delay, was gonna get one kill there with a 5-7, but good use of the Molotov and just a slow pace here from OG to make sure that they don't run into any kind of madness. Yeah, not any kind of crazy over commitment to run into that 5-7 that was boosted up from Glaive. He's 5-2 and two so far in these first four rounds. It shouldn't be a whole lot of danger. Blame F is gonna prioritize the M4. Zipix might just try and get a weapon on the exits. But this is gonna be the, uh, the scoreboard all tied up at 2 when all is said and done. Yeah, this that's a, that's a fair point to make. Config, you know, despite his struggles, this has been like maybe the one map where he seems to no. feel the most confident and comfortable as as an individual. So let's see if that has an impact on today's game. And like you said, going up against Flames in middle, uh, going to be a tough affair. Yeah, it definitely will be. His aggression is so wild. And he, you know it's coming. I mean, they've obviously been watching the demos. It's not like they're going to be surprised by what Flames is doing, but well, how to stop? Even, even his first uh, gun round where he gets the opening kill in middle as well was the exact same thing he kind of he kind of did yesterday against FaZe. You kind of turn turn left and hide in the smoke for a second follow-up flashbang, and then you kind of swing around the corner. So we'll see if uh, Config and the rest of Astralis is going to be prepared to neutralize and slow that down. AKs. AWP on Dexter. That is another obvious super weapon for the side of OG. We've seen in the past some games where Farlik actually has done an enormous amount of work. I can't remember which game. There was one recently where he was top fragging and carrying the team for a, for a long stretch there, Farlik. But up against Dexter, that's a hard... It's hard to pick Farlik over Dexter the way that he's been having an impact on the game. So, might be worse. Nice Molotov to force Dexter forward. Almost getting the kill right there. That is so scary, but oh. Dexter sticking around. Is he just trying to no-scope him? Oh, he's going to get what he came for. That's great. A little bit of a return for config, so it's still a four on four, but he's so aggressive. I love this. I love this. Keep moving forward, baby. Go for more. This is when Dexter gets to be his most exciting when he's on the hunt. He's going to be smoked off and neutralized for the moment. Counter smoke as well. Some spam coming into the boards, and Dexter's going to back away in the stalemate. Still, most of OG is lined up towards this B bomb site. Look at Glaive's push outside of A. He's really starting to shrink the map. Three defenders. Passively set up for Astralis at B. They're going to be there to buy time, harass, and cause problems as Glaive's flank comes in. And what a smoke down on that B ramp to give Glaive even more time and probably put a lot of pressure onto OG. That's the last smoke and last grenade they have at all in the B bomb site. So still, when it fades, either Glaive needs to kind of be close enough to help out or they need some really great shots because on the OG side, they have still some nades left. They have a smoke and a Molotov and plenty of flashbangs. Yeah, but yeah, Astralis is going to be really happy with the knowledge that it's coming to this bomb site, right? Glaive has all the information for him. He's covering middle. He's covering the long route back through T-spawn towards the A site. Now he's going to start going on a big flank with 22 seconds left on the clock. Here comes Fiku. Utility being spent. OG moving up into the site. Spam not connecting through the smoke whatsoever. A little bit there onto Fiku. Config's got one. The trades, but Glaive is so close. Yeah, he ran the whole way, just knowing that they weren't ever going to hear him. That's great. And he's already on the ramp. They don't, there's no way they know. Nice shot there to take down Fiku and Farlik's going to be dropping next to next. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. The information worth way more to Astralis. Dexter here smoked out. And that AWP might not be worth losing to this. He's going to try for it, but he was already low on health and gets warbanged down by Farley. So, there we go. Astralis early to shut down OG. Good move. Yeah, really nice move. Round one by Glaive, you have to say. Definitely. That information is huge. This is a good opening kill from Dexter. Traps Blame F along the wall. But then in the retake, after the bomb goes down, that flank from Glaive makes it so difficult for OG to handle anything. So one round up for Astralis. Game face is on today. Yeah, surviving that round is absolutely huge. Means they get the AWP on Farlig as well, so... Maybe we can get some Dexter versus Farley or Pain. That could be fun. Little battle going on. Blame it. Very aggressive. Pushing all the way out of that Jaguar tunnel. But they're right. They're coming through at the same time. 
Good timing between those two. Neofrag to pick up the kill. And it's a four on five. He could find Config. He's on a weird island here. Yeah, he is. Flames looks like he wants to go for the hunt. At some point up over the top, it's Nexa. So much pressure put on Config. Takes a rough fight. Glaive, he's going to stick around. He wants to find the equalizer. I can't believe he continues to go back and the nade's going to clean him up. He really wanted to turn that into a three on three. And now Astralis has some decisions to make. AWP in the hands of Farlick. Zipix as well over towards the B bomb site. Everyone's going to be smoked off and they're going to call the save right out of the gates. Three to three. That escape plan for Config there. I could understand why he doesn't want to stick around. I mean, it, it, that's possibly even more risky. Yeah. But he, when he tried to run back, one of the issues is that Glaive is behind him in middle, but Glaive only had a smoke. He had no flashbangs. I bet you if Glaive had had a flashbang, they could have helped Config escape in a completely different way, right? It would have been way harder. Maybe even just turned around to a kill, but the lack of, of flashes on anyone there kind of made, made that mid situation kind of sticky. So, unfortunate. But a good win for OG, tying it up already. Yeah, really good win. Really grinding battle in middle for control. And once they get that, it's it's all over. So two weapons saved. Farlig and Zipex will both be able to drop some rifles over to teammates. I imagine we'll see another buy for rifles for the Estrella side of things. Fist bumps all around. I like it. Still, still just makes me happy. Yeah. It's like a... It's simple a, simple pleasures for a simple man. Yeah, true. I mean, it's like a kind of ASMR that I didn't even know I existed. But like what, hearing like bumps? a really good... It was not even... It's like a really good slap. Like a really good, you know... Okay. It's so, very sound. Yeah. Can we get that in slow motion? Can production give us that? Like the sound in slow motion too? I feel like I could. <laughs> I feel like it'd be good. All right. We'll, we'll wait for the perfect Dexter high five. We'll call it out. All right. Here we go. I like this. <laughs> We've seen this before. That's extreme. Yeah, but look at the way he's got to manage the way he moves on top as the third player blinds it as well. Hasn't seen anything just yet. And how long do they want to keep this stack up? This is a lot of resources in one place. Here's the opportunity and he's got it. Well done. Well done from Astralis to get themselves a five on four. Almost given back up. Little crack in that box gave away the information. Blame F down to 34 HP. Mid is open. Mid has taken over. Yeah, because you knew there were going to be three people up there, so at least you can you can try to get the space. If you have people in position, you could try and take some other part of the map quickly before they start to rotate out. But they're at the A bomb side once again. They kind of see it coming. So pretty good read from Astralis here as well to start to move over this way. And I don't think this can work, right? It's very tricky. At least Glaive is a little bit further away now, but they got to be real carefully OG. I'm surprised that they actually smoked off this donut tunnel considering they had the rotation to, to take advantage of any kind of push towards the A bomb site from middle config is yeah you ride or die on that play there's no plan B Glaive gonna start pushing and flanking around donut but Degster is waiting with the off there's the timing there's the kill OG so patient and everyone being deleted Astralis was in the perfect position and OG negates everything I, I really, I think that smoke was was maybe their undoing. Could have been, yeah. And also, it, but it, it feels like it might even be hard to blame Astralis for losing the round the way that he did because they had the aggressive push out of A with Glaive earlier and it worked. So that might also give them sort of a, a sense of, you know what, if we hit the timing right, we flank them through Donut, it could work out. But you're right, they did slow it down and OG were like, all right, since we're slowed down anyway, let's see if you're actually going to be aggressive. And they were. So perhaps a little bit confusing. Not sure what the plan is for Zipix, but he's going to get shot from behind. Neofrag finds him. Four to three. And that's the money taken away out of the hands of Astralis. He was just enjoying those those candles in there. The new candles, the buffed candles. They're a little bit brighter. People forget about that a lot. People do forget about that. But you're right. You are a candlelight type person. You like it actually, yeah, even as a grown-up. That never gets boring. Never gets boring. Nice. Four of the last five rounds won by OG. Out of the timeout here, huge advantage against pistols. Dexter five and three, Flames is six and four to lead the way for OG's attack. And a lot of aggression from the low buy defense of Astralis is getting shredded, ripped apart by some taps from Fiku. Add in two kills on Dexter and it's all over. Fiku is one of these people on the OG team that I had almost, I think, zero knowledge of before before seeing but I knew his name, but I'd know if someone were to wake me up in the middle of the night and say, tell me a little bit about, you know, this guy, I'd be like, I, yeah. I'm not actually sure. And he's been consistently, I think, putting up really good games. Yeah, like, I had the same kind of sensation. I casted uh, this OG roster pre-Degster with Neofrag and, and Fiku coming in. 
uh, at their like inaugural show match out in Lisbon. They did a small yeah. event there right before Dallas. And even then, I was just kind of like, well, this will be a good way to get a first glimpse of these guys. Yeah, just interesting sometimes how people can come from not that much fame. And that was when all the conversation from Nexa was just, <clears throat> remember, that was like when the big quote came out that he was like, look, we just, we need to get grinders in this team. We need to get people who just want to play Counter-Strike and just want to frag out and just want to grind the game. And they're looking very comfortable with these additions and you add Dexter into everything and they've become a pretty dangerous team as we witnessed yesterday in the series win over phase. Yeah, that's an interesting thing to think about. Maybe something that a lot of people who don't maybe play at a really high level will ever experience, but having... Oh, nice, that little boost there. Such a cool addition to the way that this played out. With the changes to the B-bomb side, it's a little bit easier to do because you've got more coverage on the other side, so it's pretty nice. But if you have even one person on the team who is, you know, only willing to put in 80% of the time and the other are, are all at, you know, close to 100, that can create a huge imbalance in the team, right? So if everyone mentally is all on the same page for OG and they just want to keep keep working at it, that's great. Back to the A bomb site again. Astralis lost the round last time. They got a five on four advantage. That was from the triple boost with Firelegs AWP towards the B bomb site. They'd lost Nexa in that affair. Now they lose Dexter, but OG looking to recover again. 20 seconds on the clock. Farlog's going to start moving into position. He's grabbed one. He gets away as well. 15 seconds now on the clock. And OG, they're stopped cold. Flames trying to cut off rotations. The rest of his teammates have to create the opportunity, have to get the bomb planted. But now he's gone down. Two on five in the post plant. And Astralis, this should be a win. The question is how many numbers are going to get cut down? And it might not be anything. Good grab from Config. There goes Nexa from behind. And all five players survive for the Danes. Yeah, well done. Not losing anybody. That's a huge, uh, huge victory. Also... In the end here, when they're actually close to the bomb site, when they run into Farley, I think they had maybe one smoke. They had one smoke basically by the time he takes the shot. If they had a lot more, if they had smokes and Molotovs, they could have popped, they could have cleared way more of a way to get there. They maybe wouldn't even have to face the AWP to begin with. They could have had, you know, three versus five after plant or something like that, but they just didn't have the liquid to make it through. My, I've been. Yeah, you've joined me on the liquid right, train. Yeah. Liquid taking on Heroic as the next series of the day. And to end things, our third best of three. Uh, is going to be, why well, can't I find it? Navi taking on Vitality. Oh, yeah. Which is going to be a real, real nice banger for everyone to tune into. Simple's back. Simple is back. We'll see if that's going to make the difference. Although, in that game yesterday, Sphinx was <laughs> out of control. So. Yeah, he went a bit wild, didn't he? That that addition for Vitality looks like it's, it's paying off real well, real early. Yeah. Five on three for Astralis. Some good aggression in middle. Some good aggression from Glaive outside of the eight bomb site. And this is, I mean... I think in the last three rounds, Astralis has been able to get, or excuse me, I should say three of the last four rounds, one of them was an eco from Astralis. Astralis has been able to get the opening kill. Nice little shot there to take down Flames. So three openings, none of them returned by OG. And this is, this is a big problem. Money for Astralis is not yet that crazy, but with a round like this, if they win this one floor, it will be very back, fast. Back-to-back -back flawless rounds is going to be real nice for Astralis. I don't think they're going to want to hunt a whole lot right now. Nice thing for OG is they went on a bit of a run themselves, a bit of a clean run themselves, and look at the bank they've got built up. Dexter with 6,200, Nexo with 2,900, Fiku's dead with 6,300 as well, so it's all there. Good opening kill from Config, good push from Glaive as the Molotov clears. Fiku even waiting for it, but couldn't get the clean fight, and this one right here really sealed the round. Yeah, you don't like that. 5-5. Five, five. Technically, he activated all the facial muscles that you need to smile, but it wasn't a smile. It definitely wasn't a smile. <laughs> <laughs> happens. Yeah, not great when that happens. I always feel like it could be maybe a little bit upsetting if you run around like this, and whatever plan you had, you don't even get to execute it. You're like, oh, we don't even know if it worked or not, because we just, you know, we didn't even get to that part. Yeah. But good stuff. Really good stuff. A little quiet on both camps, really. You could feel that it's it's a match that started out close enough that no one's feeling really yeah. celebratory yet. No one's feeling like, yeah, this is it. We, we're winning. A little bit of tension. Yeah. Well, Blame F, remember, had that triple kill on the pistol round with the duelies. He's at four kills right now. So in the past, what, 10 rounds, he's only had, or nine rounds, I guess, he's only had one kill. Config pressured heavily. The only one here. No one to slow down that push from everyone. Now it's Glaive. 
One and done position from him. Wasn't able to double up on a Neofrag. There's the smoke down. Zipix lines it up, gets one through the smoke to bring it into a three on three. A doable scenario. And Dexter's got a deep angle in towards Ruins. That's a very, very important smoke right there to try and block him off. Flames is going to be picking up Sip, and the bomb is still not planted here. That's a very important kill from Flames. Oh my god, yes it is. But unfortunately, he forced the Molotov finally able to put it down. So still a two on two. It's going to say, if they would have had the bomb plant immediately, they had so many nades left on the OG side. But now, they're slowly getting whittled away and also losing players. Blame have to take down Dexter. It's Fiku on his own with a minute left, though. But he's about to get shot in the back, Farley. Just waiting for him at the off angle. And that looked like the whole start of this, the way that Flames was hunting Config in the middle. He heard him running. He knew the fight that he was going to have. And the way that they traded Glaive, that's a great setup to win a round if you're OG, but it didn't work out that way. No, but I mean, everyone from Astralis just does a really good job of just chipping away at this attack. This kill from Zipix to bring it into a 3v3, coming through the smoke to make it a 2 on 2. Blame F gets a obviously very lucky through the smoke to bring it into a 2 on 1, but just slowly but surely, Astralis chipping away the OG forces. They're up by one round. Config's in middle with an AWP. He wants nothing to do with that duel from Flames moving forward. And OG's going to head in a different direction. All of them lining up outside of the B-bomb site. Could be an aggressive play. They don't have that much utility. They have some Galils in play here. Maybe you just try and go for it. Yeah, that's an aid. That's an Orc nade. Nice reference. When is that game mode coming back? I want my life leeching AWP or AK. Oh, sip. Nice spray. Crossfire with Glaive as well, and they get absolutely mauled coming up the B ramp. Yeah, that smoke was almost like it was almost like a trap. It was like the OG players saw it coming and were just like, we can beat this. We can get ahead of it, and then it blooms a little bit deeper than they would like, and no clean fights coming through on the other side. Defense for Astralis has really started to hit lockdown mode. Two on three. Yeah, it is. No bomb plant. Finally with a couple of clean AWP shots at the end. And they're starting to look really fresh right now on the... I mean, again, it's so crazy because if they ended up losing this match or if they just came off, like, really weak at the start here, Charles, you've got to think that's also going to impact them later on, right? They've got to qualify for the major at some point, so... You want you want the momentum. I mean, there was there was a little bit of a drought yesterday as well against FaZe. Here again, they're going to have to find the solution in the waning moments of this half. Half by... Armor and Tech Nines, light on utility. Oh, flashbang right through, but he actually gives it up and maybe heard the footsteps just a bit. They're so low because they ran through the Molotov, so two of them are almost already dead by the time they make that Jaguar tunnel. Three versus four now, and Dexter is uh, practically out of the round. I like the attempt at the speed change there, but the nades for Astralis outside of the B-bomb side have been really powerful. Hard to shut it down. Glaive is having himself a good game. He's up to 12. Yeah, Finally, he's there at 11. I was just going to say that. Normally, you'd, you'd think on this map that you know, Blame F and Config are kind of the guys you'd look to, but farlog has been solid with the AWP, and Glaive's had some very, very timely, aggressive pushes to get kills and to find information. He's had good impact on this game so far. No reason for Fiku not to duel. Yeah, he might as well. And, I mean, they even left the bomb all the way back outside the B-bomb site. They're not even thinking round win. At this point, they're thinking kills. There's a good shot from Fiku. Timing on this flank could be amazing, but Zipix is peering up towards the stairs. So, I don't know if Dexter realizes how boxed in he, is, he actually is. Yeah, definitely did, but still gets a kill. That's interesting. Another headshot. Oh, 30 seconds. He could probably make it there with, to pick up the bomb, but... Is he going to go and hunt Config instead? Config started to make a little bit of a movie. He oh, moves too no. quick. Oh, this could be huge. Fiku, oh, what a headshot. And they're going to win the round. They weren't even playing to really win it. They were just playing to do some damage. That was a two on four? Yeah. With a, a Deagle <laughs> and a nine HP player. That is so unreasonable. This shot started it out. That was disgusting, but you think that might be it. Dexter gets one kill on timing. But it's all Fiku. I don't even know what to say. I don't think they know what to say. Those are the those are the hypers like a winnable round. I think they're the bomb is no. outside of B. Fiku is out with the you know, the Eagle just having a good time. Dexter was hanging around the middle and eventually oh, they find themselves in a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, at that point they're just like, you know what, let's just get a couple of kills. We're obviously probably not gonna win this round, but then they end up they end up just hitting some bangers. What a round from Fiku. Flames calls off the mid play. He was in position. As we've seen him enjoy it, flashbang over. There is an AWP admit. That's config. Or excuse me, that's Farlig. 
He's sticking around. He wants to challenge. Missed the shot. He's done. Yeah. Can't really afford to do that. Flames, a little bit of a lineup here. Maybe could have had the one kill. But it is another good double opening for Flames. Going to be taken down next second. Pick. He is completely surrounded. I don't know how quick he would have had to have been to one that fight against Fiku. But that would have given him a way out at the very least. Bomb is going to be planted quick this time. And OG are going to be tying up the scoreline. 7-7. Seven to seven. There's not much Astralis can do about it. And especially look at the weapons. They have to save the two M4s here. Yep, exactly. They have to pri prioritize the weapons for the final round. It's basically all they've got. I, I wonder, if I, I feel like if I'm OG, I might actually go on a little bit of a hunt here. See if you can take some of these guns away. Even though your money's not all that impressive going into the final round, if you can take one of these M4s out of their hands. Yeah, at least two of them could probably justify it, right? You could you could try and, and, and throw something in there. Doesn't seem like they're going to do that, but... No. Um, but yeah, they could have... It would have been really painful for Astralis if they had lost anything else. Wow, 2,000 bucks on their players as well after this round. No chance of getting away after that shot. Farlog was being very aggressive. Same with Config. This position from Glaive probably should have had at least one, and who knows what you get from there, but even Config in a, in a one-and-done position as well. So both Oppers not able to build anything off the initial shot. You've got to think, even if Glaive just gets the one kill, even if he gets traded, he buys time for Config with the op to get into either a safe position or an aggressive position to try and, and revenge a kill on Glaive, right? So, yeah, sometimes just uh, buying one or two more seconds could have a big impact. Round number 15. And Flames, yeah, he's not fully committing to it like he sometimes does, but he does get flashed through to take a peek, and when he doesn't see anyone, he's like, all right, cool. We'll wait and we'll recommit again. <laughs> They're running him down. This this reaction from OG has been happening throughout this half, right? Whenever they're noticing like pressure and bodies over at the B bomb site, they're taking mid very, very quickly and attacking towards Donut. And it's been really successful a number of times. Yeah, what a aggressive style that they're bringing in. Astralis have committed almost four people to the A bomb site. Blame F in middle. Sip was actually outside the Jaguar tunnel looking into the middle and probably called it out that a fair few people made their way into Donut. So I guess the Astralis have a decent read. But they're going to lose config early on here. And Dexter slowly creeping in. AWP at this range. Definitely going to have the advantage. But gets beat by the MP9. And that's a massive double. I don't even know where that comes from. Blame F with one more. And just like that, three versus five into a one versus three. Nexa. On his own with 40 seconds. That's an odd victory there for especially Glaive with the MP9. I don't know how he wins that fight. Nice little pick off there for Nexa. Going to be finding Sip still 30 seconds. And he's got a huge health advantage. Yeah, but if he can get the bomb, maybe that changes things. But he knows the AWP is in this A main. He swings. That's a good kill. That's a great kill. Looking for Blame F next. 20 seconds on the clock. Bomb's in front of him. Doesn't see anything with the jump. There's the peak. Nexa takes damage. 12 seconds. Yeah, and he realizes it might be a teammate that called it out for him there, saying, well, we know where he is, Ooh, but he fakes the bomb, and now Blamef is going to be right on top of him, and he doesn't know, he has no way to know exactly where Blamef is. He's already out, but he gets the aim back, and it's next. Crown to the first half of almost slipping uh, that first half away from them. I mean, they, they were losing control quickly. It's a very even match, obviously, so anything can still happen. Astralis looking to claim something back here on the T side. Pistol round is coming up. Flames in the middle, as he always is, but he's going to get out dueled by Glaive with a Glock, so that's interesting. Dexter, we started to back off a little bit worried, maybe. They're close to the B-bomb side in the middle, but still, timing is everything. Yeah, but the defense is going to need to get a little bit of a stop at the bomb site itself. There's a good start from Neo. Okay, that's perfect. That's everything they needed. I was going to say, you need you need to get some kind of kills to take the attention away from this presence in mid from this flank. Zipix is never going to expect another player, but he still gets the kill. It don't matter. Neofrag comes from behind. What a round. What a pair of high fives. <laughs> it's so fired up. It's amazing. But you're right. There's they, they actually saw Dexter run away and escape, and they tagged him, so they knew, all right, we're going to hunt him down. You're not expecting for a second player to be there. And Neofrag, these two kills, but then also the, the presence to kind of push forward and Ooh. be there in the perfect time to find a kill. Ooh, yeah. Don't let him get away. Yeah, man, that does hurt. <laughs> Jesus, calm it down. No, Some, dial it up. Someone needs to have a conversation. That's my shooting hand. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Keep the keep the high that level. I like it. Oh, Flames loves this. Love this all day. Four kills. That's a lot of bonus money racked up. Yeah. Making some money. That's really nice.
<laughs> Someone needs to interview Fiku and be like, dude, do you need a do you need like a padded glove? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he does. Maybe he could bring like uh you know like the <laughs> Ooh. Maybe he bring like the uh... <laughs> Maybe he brings like a, a mannequin arm to like push out. Yeah, just, just hold up like... a fake arm every yeah. single time. <laughs> just to try to so get a little bit of relief. I never thought I'd be analyzing high vibes in my life, but here we are. Deep nades, deep utility, Neofrag gonna get an angle, far like burning. Is gonna have to step back into safety. Nexus pushed up into the A staging area. Aggression down middle from Flames and Dexter, although one's taken down by Config through the smoke. That's a bit harsh. And still delay tactics towards the B bomb site. Yeah, even a man down though with this really forward position for Nexa, they're, they're still a kind of an interesting position. Maybe they can keep this lean towards the B-bomb site. Obviously very vulnerable in the middle if anything happens, but if Astralis try to slink, slink back to the A-bomb site, splitting it through the A-hallways, then probably there could be some trickery coming out there from, from Nexa. Do they have anything? They don't have a flashbang for this whatsoever. It looks like they almost want to cross to meet up in middle as Config starts to clear it out. There's a double setup here. Jump up. Neofrag going to dodge the Molotov. Wants to be the bait. Wants to stay in the open. He's got the bomb dropped. Gets the dink as well on the Blame F. Who's going to be an easy cleanup for Dexter? We're back into a 3v3. Dexter can actually just kind of fall away. And look at this is the timing for Nexa. This is the perfect moment because Config's attention is elsewhere. Yeah, and it has to be. There's 30 seconds. They don't even have the bomb picked up right now, so they have to be looking somewhere else. Ooh, yeah, don't, recom don't recommit to it. Just wait. You've got so much time that's working with you now. 20 seconds here, and it's all on Astralis trying to try and do something, anything, really. And Glaive now, one versus three with 15 seconds. Just not doable. It'd be a miracle if he could save the AK, but still seems like he's moving forward, and I'm not sure if that's even a good idea. Five seconds here, and he's going to run into Dexter. It's a win for OG, and... They're on a really nice path at the moment. Yeah, a really good one. This defense is starting out very, very strong. What a good round from Neofrag. The kill and the dink follow-up. The one-two punch. Never expected Dexter to be hiding in the corner still. Good adjustment. Good rotation into the position. Flank from Nexa. Absolutely perfect. Even managing the sketchiness of the SMG at that range. Yeah, but you could almost argue even sh even shooting him onto the leg is that's already and then peeking, mission accomplished. And then know? peeking with the flashbang as well. Yeah, it's just brutal all the way around. Flames blind. It doesn't matter. He's just gonna run and gun with no vision. He's gonna get the second kill as well. Nice and easy. He's just gaming. How does he track him so well? Even flashed. He's like his crosshair is on him the whole time. He's up to 17 again. So currently top fragging in the server. Those are the kind of kills that I think would that just tilt a veteran. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. So There's just like, what the? What is this idiot doing? <laughs> <laughs> why is he? Why is he getting flashed and still winning? Why is that not working anymore? I come from an era of Counter Strike where you know people have the courtesy of dying when they get flashed. But yep. That's not these zoomers. Not these zoomers. They don't believe in it. Nice kills from Glaive. He's got seven HP. One v three. Should be impossible, but you never know with timing. And does he want to save the weapon, or is he just waiting? It's a nice spot, little little waterfall back here, you know? Yeah. You might as well, if you're Glaive, go and just try and get a plant. You have a losing bonus built up. You're buying in the next round. One more kill would be nice. Obviously, the plant would be excellent. Whenever I see you know, a little water garden like that, I always think mosquitoes. A lot of mosquitoes. Mosquitoes suck. Do you guys have mosquitoes here in Denmark? Yeah. Okay. It's not a f uh, like any kind of like water or anything. I just sort of think like no, it's not worth mosquitoes. Is it? It's not a good idea. Yeah, it does look pretty, but next is going to be taking down uh, Glaive at the end, not the mosquitoes. And um, that's put, they're on a straight trajectory to a uh, map win here, OG. Yeah, it's looking real solid. Well, this is four now in a row to start out the second half. Yep, Astralis yet to find a solution. They've had some decent openings. They've done a decent job, just not able to really. Close the gap by in any meaningful way. No, they are starting to just letting go of some very, very important rounds. And you have to think now back to that ridiculous 2 1 4 with the Deagle and Dexter low on health in the first half. Suddenly, those kind of rounds really matter a lot. They'd love to have that back. AKs and the AWP on Farley, so nice weapon to open something up with. 
especially because a minute and 20 seconds and there's quite a few nades that have been used already from the og side if they use too many it gives more space for finally to do his work a little later on he can he can do more work with the orb really patient from astralis this round they didn't want to deal with any of the early engagements config now making his move in middle blame f and zip taking over control of jaguar there we go pleasing the twitter crowd oh that is sick oh pre-fire that one for sure what a payoff Gotta check close though, and he will. Crouching into the fight against Flames, ready for more. It's a triple opening. There he is. Flame F winning the round, no problem. Yeah, but you can't really replicate that, can you? Just a triple kill from Blame F, just, just walking forward and never slowing down. So eighth round for Astralis, but they still haven't figured anything out. Still, if you're Astralis, you're obviously gonna take that round every day of the week. Money's gonna build up, get some breathing room. And actually, it's gonna put not this round, but next round, that, that economy for OG is going to start getting a little tight as they rebuy after this loss comes in. I spent one evening at uh, 3 a.m., something like that, thinking about, you know, I guess night. What is it? What, if anything, is the difference? Like, if you're Glaive, like, if you're, sorry, if you're Blame in that moment, right? What's the difference between, let's say, having the perfect knowledge? Like, let's say he can read the future and he knows that someone's going to be there. And so he steps into the shot and takes it. And, and because he has, you know, read the future. What's the difference between that and just making the assumption and just doing it? Like, the outcome is exactly... It, it looks like that's what's happening, basically. So if you just... If you have the confidence for it, you just... You can... You don't know that he's not reading the future. True. That's a good point. Four-round gap. Although, if you did know how to read the future, you think you'd be doing a little bit better than 8 to 12, you know? Yeah, but you can't, you have to slow play it. Like, you have to sandbag your way through that. Like, otherwise, gotcha. you're gonna know, so... Okay, so you're trying to hide this gift. Yeah, wouldn't you? No. All right, all right. <laughs> I'd let everyone know. Straight winning every lottery from here on out. Oh! <laughs> I wouldn't even feel bad. Good headshot from Zipix. I'll just sit there with my $700 million and cry myself to sleep. Fiku's gonna step up to the plate next. But Zip and Glaive are tucked into the little alcove. Yeah, what a dangerous move. Although next there is on the other side here, which makes it very, very interesting. All three players from OG gambling towards this side of the map as well. They can win this round so quickly. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially oh, if Dexter had a flashbang back there, it'd be beautiful. Because he could have flashed Fiku into the fight, but guess not. A couple of steps being made. That's, yeah. Don't want to be making footsteps, I think, at that point in time. Glaive definitely ready for it. And I think that takes a lot of the chances away now. Maybe Dexter can still find some magic, but they do have nades to try and get rid of him. They can flash him and smoke him and model him out of that position, so... One shot, though, from Dexter can take the attention away from Nexa. Now, what this kind of situation might actually force is Dexter to push through a smoke or be over-aggressive or overexpose yeah. himself. Ooh. And Nexa can have some stopping power right here, right now. 30 seconds on the clock. They've already lost one, two versus four. They can't afford to do it again. And that is a wide swing. And that's a problem for Nexa. You know, if he wants to win that fight, or win both the fights, really, he kind of needs for the first one to be a shallow peak, instant headshot, and then he can follow it up. But when Glaive runs that far out, yeah, really hard to do anything about. So nicely done for Astralis. They're going to get a bomb plant, and they're going to win the round. Yeah. Opening kills, slow things down, wait for the re-aggression, wait, wait for the information plays. Blame F is even waiting outside this B-bomb site, knows everything that's happening. So Dexter's going to swap out to the AK to try and stay alive. And he'll want to get his hands back on that AWP at some point. Astralis hunting. Blame F wrapping around to the B-bomb site up ramp. Zipix wrapping around the B-bomb site from CT spawn. And Dexter has himself tucked into a corner. But remember, he doesn't want to go too far away from that AWP. Yeah, he wants to say in the area. Question is, is he going to be able to take anyone with him? They're definitely going to get him eventually. Finally there to pick up the kill. And it's a nice, nice little recovery. Late in the map here for Astralis to start to wake up, but they are. 9 to 12. It's a nice little judo move. Use the aggression of flames in middle against him. Just post up with an AWP and grab it as he swings out wide. And OG's gonna be back to pistols. Still got rounds to play with, still got some money to play with moving forward. But Astralis is building back up into this second half. Suspicious lack of grenades in the middle for um, 
from the OG side. I mean, astronomers probably know what the economy is anyway, but if they didn't, the fact that there's no bombardment of smokes and Molotovs and HEs, they, they definitely realize, all right, something is up. And just, I mean, apart from not losing too many players here, don't lose any rifles over earlier. I like the fact that they're, they're mostly grouped up here. Config a little bit deeper in middle now on his own, which again is, makes me nervous, you know. Yeah. What if he ran into the wrong deagle at the wrong time and sure. gave over an AK? Yeah, that'd be an issue. But his flames want to push. He's being patient for the moment. Blame F already peering into the B bomb site. He might get some freebie kills from this position. Yeah, indeed. Just oh. get out of the way. There's the good headshot to start with. Sip with one in return, trying to make his way up inside of the smoke, waiting his Neo Frag. Question is, it's kind of a wide smoke. You'd have to run through it for a while. 40 seconds, and they're clearing out the middles. They could even call it back if they wanted to, or they could just leave Config there to shoot anyone in the back that's defending. So a little bit of a choice to be made here. Dexter's going to be found by Farlig, and I think that's the opening they probably needed all along. Right now, they have isolated some of these fights a bit more, and they'll find Fiku as the last defender on the bomb site. Yeah, I think Dexter just was a little too wide. I don't think he expected to be picked off by Farlig down at the ramp. Good shot from the opera to open things up, busted up a kind of three-way crossfire setup. And showing, I think, a little bit too, the, the difficulty if you're flames of knowing when to commit to that, you know, push. If he does it early, he's he's going to get picked off every time because someone's almost always watching that. And late, well, yeah, you can't really, can't be part of the action. So I guess that's how it is. I think that's 21 kills on Glaive. I think he's back top fragging in the server. Okay. Good on Glaive. Yeah, he's having himself a, a nice match at the moment. Opening map, and it's already... Uh, Close. It's already a taxing game. Yeah, it's a close affair. 12 to 10. Just a two-round lead now for OG. Three straight rounds for Astralis to come back into this. And off we go. Glaive heading towards middle. Quickly past the Molotovs. And even he can't beat Flames. They've thrown everyone at him. The only one who's been able to find this kill on Flames has been Farlig with the AWP. Yeah, what a champion he is right now defending the middle of the map and they need it here OG they're not that far away from a map victory and this is their map pick as well so you assume that they want to show what they what they've got here four more rounds and they'll be able to take it config slowly edging forward but that is such a long range config just cannot see it but at least he doesn't die unlike Neil Frag, who does get wall banged down by blame F. Nexa sneaking in, almost getting the timing down. All right, but the second person in line was Farlig with the AWP. Hesitation from Nexa. Hesitation gets him killed. Oh, Flames, even he jiggles into a P, gives away the game to Config, trying to find a fight. Good headshot, important headshot from Config, and Farlig still has deep control. Don't need utility in the choke point because the AWP is covering everything. And look at the way Astralis is spread around the map. <laughs> They're just chilling. Yeah, waiting, waiting for uh, anyone from OG to move forward. They've already got a couple of kills that way. At some point, because the bomb is so deep down towards the V-bomb site, they obviously want to make that move. Yeah, I was going to say, time to probably make a run of it here so that you don't don't want to leave, leave five seconds for the bomb plant, just in case there's some crazy person showing up with a Molotov or something like that. It's an awkward way to lose a round, but they're, they're going to win it, no problem here. This is an annoying, annoying thing to play against as well for OG. It, they, some of these engagements, you know, they obviously win the opening one, Flames on the Glaive, but then Blame F finds a kill. Then Config is challenging into the eight bomb site, and from there, because everything is so spread across the map, your movement is so restricted on the defensive side. Dexter's going to be able to save the AWP. But they might want to take a timeout. They're having some real issues handling this Astralis offense. Oh, it happened like that. Okay. It'd be 11th round for Astralis, almost closing the gap entirely at the moment. Dexter with the AWP. They're somewhat casually looking for him, not really invested into it, but they do have a lot of money on the Astralis. So they could, if they wanted to, have gone a little bit more aggressive. Well, cool. talking about money, look at it, what it's looking like at an OG. This is going to have to be a half buy around this AWP. Deagles and some armor, maybe a little bit of utility, some five sevens popped in there. Astralis on the verge of evening out the scoreboard. Yes. What a what a nice return. I was getting I was getting slightly worried. It looked uh, to me like OG were just gonna run yep. all the way home. They had that lockdown defense early. It's good to see Astralis finally <laughs> batter it down. 
deagles to support the awp with and nobody in middle for the og side not trusting that they can win any fight here without the utility so instead going to be a and b a little bit of a forward position again for neo frank dexter quite far back with the orb which is a little bit interesting boosted up but i, I was assuming that maybe he would have tried to be even more aggressive to find something that's frustrating. Tag to the smoke as you cross over, but an early portion of the round for a config and glaive to have this much control. No one from OG really concerned about the mid flank just yet. But call certainly coming in from Fiku that it's possible they're in that position. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely going to realize that. That's, I will say, of all like, of all the oppers we've got, Dexter is one of the uh, one of the ones that I, 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 you know, if you have a lone op, yes, you're like, let's see Dexter with it. Let's see what he can do. I agree. He's also one of the ones where I would expect for him to be a lot more mobile, running around the map looking for something. But maybe that's more difficult than uh, than we expect on the CT side of this map. Flames going to be found. Actually, a lot of damage. Oh, he finds the headshot on Glaive. He almost got the follow-up blind as well. Oh, but this is going to force Blame F to maybe make a move here. This is going to put them right towards the AWP. And Neofrag stepping in. Oh, he's blocking the shot. There it is on a far leg. Bombs down. Blame F, what do you do here? Gonna throw the flashbang. Dexter's moved up forward though. Blame it. Does he see it coming? Almost could it get the quick shield there, but not quite. Fiku and Nexa two versus three. Only 20 seconds left. If you would have found that kill, Fiku, on the sip, what an awkward round it would have been. I'm surprised to see Dexter go for such an aggressive play. He obviously almost found a timing to catch to catch Blame F with the nade in his hands, but oof, you're really you're really throwing up a Hail Mary there with that shot through that little murder hole. And you could, I think that might be one of those things where the kind of aggression that we associate with someone like Dexter, if, you're, if your opponents know that you like to play that way, some of the surprise goes out of it. And Blame if definitely, he, you could see from the way that he was moving that he had a pretty good read. I'm just surprised by just mostly because he still had his teammate in the B bomb site, like having oh, information yeah. that nobody's rapping upon him. Like he didn't really need to feel the pressure to make that play. Although obviously when you're the one saved weapon, you are kind of feeling the pressure of, yeah. of making a play. <laughs> and they didn't have that much time either. So he, yeah, there's maybe a couple of reasons why he could have slowed it down. But either way, it's a close round. Yeah. It's very nitpicky as well. That's what we're here for. Tied up. It is tied up. What a nice rib. What is it? 12 to 8 at one point? 12, yeah. 12 7, maybe even? 12 7. It's four in a row to start the half from OG, and now five in a row for Astralis to bring things to 12, and timeout's going to be taken. That's well done. That's, that's obviously not it, something anyone wants to supply. First map of the best of three. You don't want to be off to a bad start here, even if you have a little bit of a margin to, to get back into the match. Flames pushing forward, very aggressive, spinning around, and again, he's just so hard to take down in the middle. He's ready for more, and he's going to get a double kill. You could see if there was a third man there, he would have been ready to fight too. What an absolute beast. Yeah, I can't believe he's actually gotten away with two kills and surviving. Blame Map going to step up next. He's got Neofrag. There goes Dexter. Neofrag falls as well. It's all on Flames one more time. Farlig missed the opportunity, but they know there's only one player at the B-bombs up, but look at where the bomb is. They can't actually take advantage of everything. Or of anything, excuse me. Zipix has got to rotate all the way back around, which opens the space for this play from Fiku. Yeah, I don't know if Fiku heard him running. I doubt it. But even then, just being able to call it out and saying, yeah, there's nobody here. Takes a little bit of a liberty here. Make some noise, run forward. But can no one's hear hearing this? him. I don't think he can. I think no, he might too be far too away. far away. Yeah. Oh, almost catching Zip. The timing is ridiculous. If he keeps this up, he should be able to find him. But... He's going to divert into the middle. Even that might be worth it. He should be catching Blame if There's no way Blame if is going to be checking this. And there's the kill. Sip just passed him there. So Blame if must have th been thinking, well, that's uh, that's the one area of the map where I don't have to look. But because of where Blame if was moving, it's even possible that Fiku will say, well, we kind of know where they were going. And like a little rat, he disappears. All the way back to the B-bomb side. Zipix has no idea where he's gone. 18 seconds. Zipix... His options are basically eliminated. He's going to have to start running soon, which is going to give Fiku all the information he needed. Even caught, he doesn't have time to fake anything. Doesn't have time to clear anything. Bomb out. Easy kill. Easy cleanup. 13 to 12. That is such a nice move. You have to appreciate it. Fiku just finding the perfect time to be 
slow and to be quick running through to just get there in time. That is well done. Finally putting a break on Astralis, who've been winning five in a row. Yep, three kills from Flames also. I mean, the man yeah. the man from yesterday who had all the biggest impact when OG needed it most delivers again here. A timely triple kill to stop the momentum. Money's still an issue for OG's defense, though. Farlick has done a good job negating Flames' aggression in the past, so let's see if he can do it again. That smoke really helping him out. But the flashbang against him, just not able to flick, couldn't really see what he was aiming at there. So it'll be some mid control for the OG side. And they're trying to be aggressive now, pushing Blame If Wiz alone out here. He doesn't have any backup, but he does have a flare and do flashbang. Sip setting it up, and it's a good wallbang in return. Fiku able to at least get the revenge. And now Dexter not getting caught by Config, and he's ready for more. He knows there's a second player there. Swings wide for it, and that could have been the end of him, but he's so fast taking down Glaive. And now it's a two versus four that OG should not be losing. Farlik trying for the job. He's trying to bait out the shot, and eventually he'll get what he asked for. Not what he wanted, though. Yeah, no, he did, he did get the shot, for sure. Piku finds one jumping in the air, and Dexter with a fantastic round. This time, it's a triple kill from the Alper for OG to keep them in the winning ways. 14 to 12. Just like that, OG's got it back. Still money on Astralis, though. They actually had just so much in the bank, so gonna keep fighting. And look at the way it's kind of reversed as well now. OG fighting for mid, taking control of mid. Something, then kind of disappearing for mid, and then they come back into it again. And by virtue of how dominant this five-round run, run run was from Astralis, yep. look at the money they yeah, got. They does. buy again. They just lost two rounds, absolutely deleted. They're still buying back up into it. They still got another buy after this. So investing through the losing bonus building up. So it, the, OG's going to have to close this game in a very difficult fashion against constant buys. They're not going to have any easy rounds to get their victory here on map one. 21 kills on Glaive, 23 on Flames. He's been stuck on that for a while, though. You mentioned yeah. 21 kills on Glaive about three or four rounds ago. Yeah, it's been some some really difficult ones in there. And maybe especially against Flames in the middle. And they, they're not even going there, Astralis. Like, all right, whatever. Yeah. You can have it then. And as a result, OG can have pretty decent forward defense over at Donut. And they're yeah, now a little bit back in the middle with Dexter. Might have just run over to throw some more nades to Nexter, I'm assuming, behind him. We'll see. Bombs here in middle, though. The support of Glaive to activate config. Glaive's going to rotate back around towards the B site. Timing shot. About a second and a half off. And config's going to get access to stairs with ease. They should know this is a possibility. How aggressive does he want to be on the backstab? 37 seconds. Time is running wow. down. Dexter's at the B bomb site, and he's got a Molotov. Config going through his own smoke. That's a dangerous jump. Did he hear that? I feel like Nexus surely must have, but you're right. The clock is really the, what matters at the moment here. 22 seconds. They're starting to think about it, but Config's timing is everything, and they're really slowing it down, Astralis. Maybe a little bit too much. This is getting really sketchy. They only have 13 seconds to try and get onto the site. Config's going to be going down, and they get absolutely stopped at the ramp. Seven seconds. This cannot be done. Dexter and Neofrag with a kill each, and they just missed a slight moment there where they had to get onto the site. Oh, but they were never the going to get the bomb plan. You're right. After the time as well, 15 on the side of OG. Neofrag actually plays that really, really well, right? He stalled out Blame F's entire play through Jaguar trying to get into cave. He shows presence, drops a flashbang, shows he's actually going to take the duel. And as soon as his teammate goes out, he just, he just leaves. He just books it. So he knows Blame F is going to be slowed down and paused and has to be hesitant, ready for a fight. And Neofrag's in a position they just don't expect. Him and Dexter shut this down. Three chances for OG. <laughs> okay, Flames. You cannot not love him. You just have to. You just, there's no choice. It's like he just, it's like they have all the, it's like the meme cheer. I know. Like that's something I would expect on like the HLTV forums. Let's go, Blame yeah, well, listen, if he's come up through the, those forums, then you know he's, he's made, <laughs> made of diamond, you know. You can withstand anything. <laughs> Just the one kill here, but it's on Glaive, again, who's been playing very well, but slowing him down early. Look at this forward position, Neo Frank. He might walk straight in. He might... Oh, wait! They get the shot off first. Fiku with a couple, and that alerts Neo Frank. Not that he's even needed. Next up, we'll get one more. But I thought for a minute Neo Frag was going to back yeah. straight into it and die. Instead, Fiku comes in with a crucial couple of kills, and it's going to be OG winning the O2 